agent development kit from Google. It's one of the easiest way to create AI agents, evaluate those agents and deploy those agents. It has a built-in user interface, API server. Even if you're an absolute beginner, you should be able to get started with creating AI agents. This is what I built and it's running locally on my computer. I'm just asking, what is the stock price of Apple? Now, based on that, it's going to run those tools, get relevant information. You can see clearly the call between those agents and the tools, all the messages included. And finally, you get the answer here. The stock price of Apple is 206. It also has built-in state, artifacts, sessions, and eval. I'm going to take you through step by step how you can build this completely locally on your computer. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. It's a multi-agent system without the complexity. Build AI agents that think like humans, create systems that work while you sleep, and deploy anywhere with just one command. This is even simpler than other frameworks such as Autogen, Langgraph, and Crew AI. You are able to build in minutes with just few lines of code. You can use multiple models. Also, you got full transparency with visual debugging and evaluation. Three simple steps. Install ADK, define your agent and deploy anywhere. I'm going to take you through step by step how you can create a basic agent, basic agent with tool, agent with state, multi-tool agent, structured output agent and callback agent. I'll provide all the code in the description below for you to copy and run it yourself. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. So first step, pip install Google ADK and Y Finance. So we are going to create a custom tool called Yahoo Finance and add that tool to AI agent. Then after that, click enter. Now ADK create, I'm going to create an app and then click enter. This will automatically create the required files. So I'm going to use Gemini 2.0 Flash, choosing number one. I'm going to use Google AI, that's the easiest option, so choosing one. Now I can add my API key, which you can generate from aistudio.google.com slash API key. So once after you generate that, enter that here. Now if you see, you got three different files created. One is agent, init, and .env. env contains your environment variables. You can see that here. Agent.py will have this basic agent setup and the init file will contain this code. So for now, we are going to go into agent.py file and improve it from here. So first we are going to create basic agent. So same as before, from Google ADK agents, import agent. Then after that, I'm going to create a basic agent with agent class and all this information. It's just the basic agent, which is same as the agent, which is automatically generated. So it's a simple agent that answers question. So you can see name, you can change the model if you want, and then instruction. So now after this, if you want to run this, I'm going to create a variable the root agent and assign the basic agent to root agent. So by default, you need to set this up. You need to have a root agent. So this is going to be run first. And this is the overall code. And we have successfully created an AI agent. Now I'm going to run this code in your terminal, adk run app.py. This will automatically create the required logs. And here's the user. Now I can ask any question. Tell me about Google. And it's going to answer me the response from the basic agent. So this is for us to test the app, ADK run app. And I'm going to exit this. We also have multiple options. If you go to ADK help, you have API server to create the new app, which I've just shown. We just did ADK run. We also have other options such as web for testing this AI agent in a web interface. So I'm going to show you ADK web and then click enter. Now you can clearly see it's running the web application in this URL. So I'm going to open this URL and here's the URL where you can choose your agent. And now I can ask the same question. Tell me about app. And after that, it's going to respond here. You can also see the conversation here and the response is from the basic agent. I can even ask further question. What was my previous question just to see? if it knows the context. And I can clearly see it's all integrated well. So you can see request response at the top here. This is just for our debugging purpose. You can also see a session ID. Each session ID consists of our user messages, such as our question, answer from the agent, list of tool calls, and also it saves the state for this session. So you can see the state here, also artifacts, you can also create evaluation set. So for now, we are going to focus on the events. 
where you got the first question and also the second question. So now we have completed the first step of creating the basic agent. Now let's create a tool. So this is the whole setup. We have a stock agent which has access to the stock info tool and the agent is going to use that tool and give us the response. So I'm going to keep this basic agent just for our reference. Then coming to basic agent with tool. So just importing the agent, importing Yahoo Finance as YF, then creating a function called get stock price, which will automatically return the stock price based on the ticker symbol. If it's Apple, it's AAPL, and that will be passed here, and you get the stock price. So it's just a simple function, and that will be used as a tool for the agent. So tool agent, creating the agent, and naming it as tool agent with the description, a simple agent that gets stock price. And it's a stock price assistant. It will use the ticker symbol and use the tool get stock price tool to get relevant answer. So I'm going to assign this tool as the root agent. So that's where it starts. Literally this much amount of code to create tools and assign that to agents. So this function is assigned here as tools. So this tool agent can use this tool to give relevant answer. So now it's ready. Now I'm going to run this. So previously I was running the basic agent. So I pressed control C to cancel the previous setup. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to run that again, ADK web. Now again, it's restarted. Coming back to my previous URL and refreshing it. And now let's try this. What is the stock price of Apple? Now you can see it uses the get stock price tool. That is the function. Then got the answer back. Based on that, it's giving me this response. This is a real time answer. Stock price of Apple is 206. By default, this agent doesn't have real time data. By adding tools, you're providing the real time response. Also, you can see the interaction here. So tool agent requesting from get stock price function, then it returns the response back to the tool agent. And finally, the agent responds with the final answer, the stock price of Apple. So it's very clear in this user interface. Now, step number three, or the feature number three is agent with state. So same like that, we are importing agent and also tool context, importing Yahoo Finance, having the same function, get stock price and stateful agent. And here we are using the same get stock price function. But the thing what changed here is the get stock price function. So we are initializing a state. So the state name is recent searches. So it will keep on storing the list of recent searches and when we request, it will automatically provide that answer. So it's just nothing but a memory for that particular conversation. So let's try this in action, assigning that to the root agent. And I'm going to restart the current setup. ADK web, coming back to the UI, I'm going to ask what is the stock price of, of Tesla. So I got the answer here, both for Apple and Tesla. But at the same time, if you see here in the state, you got Apple and Tesla getting stored in the recent searches. So the AI agent can remember all the searches we did. Stock price of Google, I'm adding one more and you can see it got automatically added here. So the AI agent clearly remembers the list of company we searched for. So that's where this state comes in. And in the events, you can see all the list of conversation. If I click a new session, you can see the conversation is not there because it's completely new conversation. And for this conversation, you will have a dedicated state. For the previous sessions, you can even go to the sessions. So I click this session and you can see the conversation which we just had. And I can even continue the conversation from here. So now we have successfully created agent with state. Ability to remember specific information. Next feature number four, multi-tool agent. So this is same as single tool agent, but we are going to provide two different tools. One is get stock price. And another one is get stock info. The info will be provided with company name, the ticker symbol and the sector. So it's a multi tool agent with same as before creating the agent agent with multiple tools, get stock price and get stock info. I'm going to assign the multi tool agent here. So adding multiple tools is simple. Just create each function like this and then provide that to function name in the tools list. Now I'm going to run this code, just restarting. Give me stock price of Apple and info. Now you can see it used the get stock price function and then get stock info function. So here is the interaction for get stock price, get stock info, and the response get stock price and get stock info. And here is the final answer. So this came from the get stock price function and this is 
technology sector. This is from Get Stock Info. Now feature number five, structured output agent. So importing agent, this time I'm using Pydantic. That's where you're going to define your structured output. Pydantic is a popular tool to get a structured response from AI agents. If you want to know more about Pydantic, I've already created another video, which I'll put the link in the description. Now I'm going to create a class with stock analysis and the response I need to get a ticker symbol and the recommendation, whether to buy or sell. So now same as before, I'm going to create a tool called get stock data, which returns the stock price and the target price. Next, creating the structured agent. For this, I'm using LLM agent. That is the only difference. So after that, I'm going to create a structured agent. The structured agent will have the output schema. That's the stock analysis. So it's here and the output key stock analysis. So these two are required and I'm assigning the structured agent to the root agent. So by default, agents generally create a random response without any structure. By defining like this, you are able to make the agent respond in a structured way. So let's try this restarting. Tell me about the stock of Apple. So now you can see we got a structured response. Ticker Apple and the recommendation is buy. This is brilliant. Even if I ask Tesla, you can see the response. It's consistent. I'm going to ask Google and I got the consistent response. One thing to note is that currently this structured response doesn't support tools, but probably that will get added soon. Now the final feature, callback agent. So same as before, I'm importing all these modules, creating function number one, get stock data, returns the ticker symbol and the stock price. Second function before tool callback. So this is going to be run before running the tool. Next, we are going to create after tool, after tool callback. This runs after the tool is being called. Now we are going to create a state just for our reference, initializing state tool usage. And now time to create the callback agent callback agent and here's the callback agent with tools before tool callback and after tool callback so before running this get stock data function it will run this tool and after running this this will be run and going to use the callback agent as a root agent that's it as simple as that we created three functions get stock data is the key function or the key tool and the callback function is before tool callback and after tool callback and assigning that here so in this way, we can debug this further and get more information. What happened before calling this tool and what happened after calling this tool. Now I'm going to run this. Coming back to the UI, what is the stock price of Apple? And you can see here, get stock data. And you can see the callback function is used to record this tool usage. So if I say stock price of Tesla, you can see the get stock data became two because I've called that two times. You can even trace that using trace function here. So clicking this, you can see clear trace information. So the agent was run, then before callback, after callback, and the response here. As simple as that. Next, we are going to see how you can deploy your agent. So you've got three different options. One is deploying on Vertex AI agent engine or Cloud Run or custom infrastructure. For this tutorial, I'm going to deploy in Cloud Run. So as a basic requirement, you need to log into cloud.google.com and sign up for an account, then gcloud CLI. Once after that is done, in your terminal, gcloud auth login to log into your account. Next, ADK deploy cloud run space app and then click enter. This will ask where do you want to deploy the application. You can choose a location and finally you can see it got deployed just with one command. The last thing we are going to see is to set up API server. So again, it's just one command, ADK API server and it'll automatically start the API server. And I can open this URL. I'm adding slash docs to get the documentation on the list of API endpoints. And this is brilliant. There are more functions such as runner, setting up MCP tools within this agent. And I'll be covering those in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Now we have successfully created AI agent with all these features. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Considering you already like AI agent, I also created another video about Olama MCP agent, which I highly recommend for you to watch and I will see you there.